Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today I have something really special for you. The first professionally made prototype of my Taschen here, Hirschfänger, which means pocket deer catcher. Um, it, it, what it is, it's, it's a pantographic knife. It's a folding knife with a really long double-edged blade. Beautifully made and really, really badass. Let me show you its features. But first, let me show you where I was starting from, because this is the knife that was the basis for my new design. It's a pantographic knife that was sold in the 70s. It's, I think it's made in Taiwan. It's, it's really inexpensively made. And, uh, you know, as you see, it looks kind of curious. And it has a lot of disadvantages. First of all, this lock here was this really flimsy little sheet metal, really thin. And, um, yeah, it is a pantographic knife, as you can see. But you can, you can already see the disadvantage um, it is not very you know you, you can very easily you know dull the blade or the uh, saw back because it touches the blade since there is really no alignment so there's, there's no sinking of this whole thing here you can see you know so it's very easy to cant the blade during the process so you have to do this very carefully plus also even when you got it open okay okay so even when you got it open lock it it's really not comfortable at all see I mean this is really edgy and I also think the handle is too short the whole knife is just cheap and I think it's just it's, it's, it's just a collector's piece or not even I mean it was just something new so so that was my starting point there even was a version that was labeled Waffen SS and it even had an RZM number on it and swastikas and whatnot uh, but that's all fake um, there was no paratrooper knife that was ever issued like that I mean they had paratrooper knives but not pantographic knives I don't think that there was uh, an original ever found and there was also no mentioning of it I think this is just like a fantasy thing that came up after World War II so what did I want to enhance on this design? Well, first of all, there must be a way to make this synchronous. As you can see, I mean, this is just a, a no-go. You know, it, it's very hard to open it, so this is the basic thing. Then also this closing mechanism, this lock mechanism here, that needs to be enhanced because this is simply, you know, garbage. Also, I want a much more comfortable handle. Uh, and overall, of course, the looks must be improved and I want a longer blade and then because you know, the blade entirely disappears in the handle This one of the big advantages is that you can do it double-edged You know, it's a folding knife and double-edged and, and that is an advantage where they didn't take use of this advantage with this design So these are the things that I wanted to enhance First thing that I did is I replaced this clumsy little thing, you know, the lock thing against a nice little uh, lever here and this clicks in place nicely like it should I think it's a much better solution uh, easily done but the biggest improvement is the synchronization because what I did is only the front part of the handle swings not both parts you know the rear part always stays solid and closed and this enabled me to integrate this little rates, uh, uh, rail system here where the um, where, where, where this part of the blade that is not sharp is actually guided through the rails here so you can even do this on one side it's not possible to decant this uh, this knife you can't really can't the blade while opening and closing also important is this pin here that you see this pin here is actually also found as a hole in the in the boards like here in the in the metal uh, parts of it and what you can see is that this makes it impossible for the handle parts to actually over, you know, to shoot over, you know, to swing over to the other side. They can't because they lock against that pin. So synchronization is absolutely possible. Also, of course, in terms of the blade length, what I did is I perfectionized, I think perfectionized the dimension. As you see, this is now a much, much better handle. And um, also the blade length is perfect, I think. Uh, it's double, it's you not know, sharp on both edges, so this is all done. The looks, well, I leave this to you. I mean, I'm not sure if you like these looks or if you don't. I like them a lot. And of course, it is designed after the Hirschfänger, and that also has legal reasons. Yeah, so for comparison, this is the original, and this is the counterfeit <laughs> done by yours truly. And I, I like this one better. I'm not sure about you. Yeah, let me know in the comments. So just for the legal aspects, um, 
this is a Hirschfänger, which is like a hunter thing to actually finish off, like to you know finish off a wounded deer, right? That that was the original purpose of it, and today it's a part of traditional hunting uh, clothing and, and outfits, you know. So uh, so the law in Germany says that a Hirschfänger is not considered to be a weapon. It's just a knife, and as a knife, it's a folding knife, and a folding knife that you need both hands to open it, obviously. In this case. There is no limit on the blade length, so you can EDC this knife in Germany uh, all day long without a reason. Or you could not do the same with a real Hirschfänger that is a fixed blade, because fixed blades can only be carried up to 12 cm, about 5 inches of a blade length. And this definitely has more. <laughs> uh, but you can of course also carry it open. I mean, the law doesn't say anything about it. As long as it's foldable, it's a folding knife, you can carry it. So, criticism. Of course, there is criticism and there, it will pop up, I have absolutely no doubt about it. First criticism what people will say is that when the knife is closed, like so, that the blade is actually open in this part and that you could potentially cut yourself on it. That actually cannot really happen because, see, the rail is protected. So, I cannot really catch my finger on the blade here. That's just not possible. It's a little bit like with a safety razor, right? So, so even if you, if you try to, you know, cut into your flesh like so, you can't because that edge protects you. So, this is it's safe. You, even if you grab onto it, you can really hold onto it, and you, you can't cut yourself on it. So, I've, I've been taking care of this element. Second criticism is that, you know, of course, when you push this open, at some point, you can really see that it, it, here, the blade is not uh, is, is, is touching the rails just a little bit and that of course will dull the blade a little bit. Well, so far that didn't happen. I mean, I've opened this many, many, many times and still it's very, very sharp. I can, can't see any effect on it. But of course, this is not designed to be opened and closed like a million times. It really is not. The purpose of this is basically to be carried open. So if you carry it, you would put it in the sheath and then carry it on your belt and it, the only reason why it is foldable is, first of all, because it's kind of nice and different, but also because then it's legal to carry in Germany. If it would be a fixed blade, you couldn't. And then, of course, the question arises, how solid is this knife? I mean, really, how solid is it uh, in comparison to a fixed knife? Well, it can't ever be as solid as a full tank fixed knife. No folding knife is. But this knife is really, really solid because, see, the, the, the steel here, you can see the steel bars here, they're all straight. So the vectors do not have an, like an angle, so they press right against the strong part of the, of the steel. And therefore I don't think that you can easily, oh, you probably cannot really bend this with physically. And also, see the, the, the blade is held in place by this box here, which is really a, a big box of steel that's guiding it for about an inch right here. So it is very solid also against outside mo um, movements. But you know, of course, this of course is no pry bar. This is a knife that is designed to kill large, am uh, large mammals. So, and this is a, I think it's really well suited for that job, believe me. <laughs> of course, the next question is when, when, when is this available and how much will it cost? Well, um, both is a little bit open still. I will try to keep this under 200 euros. Um, even though, of course, as it says on the on the knife itself, it's limited to just uh, 1,200 pieces. Uh, to, well, as it says on the knife itself, it's limited to 2,400 pieces. And you know, I never do a second production run on this, so this is a one-time only offer. And my guess is because I still have a few things that Böker needs to enhance before I actually give this into production. I still think that it will take between six and eight months before it hits the shop. And then, as you know, there is no uh, possibility to pre-order. You gotta wait until it's ready, until it's ready to ship, then I will release a video and then you guys have a little race ahead of you to get one of these. And we sell maximum two per person. <laughs> but soon. <laughs> so, the pantographic deer catcher knife. <laughs> I'm totally in love with it. Uh, and I think Böker did a great job make turning this from my wooden sample into reality. They really know how to build a knife. <laughs> I like it a lot and I hope that you like this video because that's it for today. Thanks and bye-bye. <laughs>